How's it going everyone? Mountain Spider here for another Pokemon TCG video. Now this is going to be quite an exciting video as there are two new box sets, well two new theme decks out. The Sun and Moon series Unseen Depths and the Sun and Moon series Towering Heights. Now I haven't actually gone through these deck lists, I do plan on buying both of them. And quite frankly I'm just going to go and grab the Kyogre one right off the bat. Just without looking at the deck list, it's the one I want to check out first. So let's redeem this and let's have a look. Okay, so it's actually running Piplup. Bubble Hold. The new Pokemon is basic Pokemon. It can't attack during opponent's next turn. That is crazy good. That should knock out most most basic Pokemon. Okay. Print up Water Dive, Direct Dive. Discard all energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 100 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Okay, interesting. And Emporeon. Recall, choose an attack from one of this Pokemon's previous evolutions and use it as this attack. Oh, that is quite nice, the bubble hold. For what energy? That is very nice. And the Aqua Fall just discard all energy. Okay, I'm liking this. Fionn, once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may have your opponent switch their active Pokemon to one of their bench Pokemon. If you do, discard all cards attached to this Pokemon and put it on the bottom of your deck. All right, that can be very clutch. Scampering tail once during your turn. Before you attack, you may put the top card of your opponent's deck on the bottom of the... Okay, fair enough. If they're if they sorting out draw mechanics. Nice catch, draw two cards. Bye-bye, foe. -bye, discard up to two cards from your hand. This is attack to six damage for each card you discard this way. I'm not a fan. Psyduck, eh. Golduck, eh. I'm not too excited about those, I prefer the gold decks from the other. Kyogre, high water, attach two energy cards from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. Okay, that explains all the discarding then. Alright, and then swirling waves, discard an energy from this Pokemon. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not feeding this Kyogre too much. Um, pick a book or call for me, search your deck with two base Pokemon for the one to your bench. Perfect setup as your, fir as your first active Pokemon, and then surprise first. You and your opponent play rock, paper, scissors. If you win, this attack does 60 more damage. I don't like those types of mechanics. I know it's it's fun, but I, mm, I'm not a fan. Switch, I'm glad to see. Pokemon Communication, I'm glad to see. Viridian Forest? Once during each player's turn, the player may discard a card from their hand. If they do, that player search the deck for a basic energy card, reveals it, and puts it into their hand. Then that player shuffles their deck. Alright. It does help your opponent, so I don't know. Huey, I'm happy to see good card draw. Pokemon Fan Club, I'm happy to see. Roller Skate, discard a card from your hand. If you do, draw two cards. If you discard an energy card this way, draw two more cards. Okay, so this deck's revolving a lot around discarding energy cards and using Kyogre to get them back. Okay, Ted and Lisa, I always like seeing. Cynthia is always good to see. Lily, ee. Draw energy, this card provides energy. When you attach this card from your hand to Pokemon, draw a card. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this deck. Um, let's see how it performs. Let's jump into a game, into a versus game, and see how it performs. I I don't know. Um, jump into an unseen depths game. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be as reliable or something like laser focus. Just looking at that deck list, it looks like Emporium is going to be what this entire deck is going to be revolving around. Um, I don't like that the Kyogre is the fetch mechanic for the energies as an attack. Um, a little bit con concerned about that because I don't want to be wasting wasting an attack bringing energy to my discard pile. I'd much prefer that to be a Pokemon power um, that you can sit on the bench or something like that. So I'm a, I'm a little concerned about this deck. Well, when I say concerned, I'm a little bit worried that it's not going to outperform the other decks. Um, not a fantastic opening hand. I don't really think I want Psyduck as an opener, but anyway. Um, I would have loved a Lily, but anyway. Uh, luckily I do, I should have a relatively good matchup as I'm going up against the fire deck. So there's that. Um, Lion King 19. Strong name, strong name. Uh, yeah, so let's see how this goes. Mm, they got a better, much better start than I had. Definitely gonna go for Roller Skater, discarding one of the water energies, try and get four cards, and go from there basically. I'm not 
terribly confident about this hand. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see. I don't know this deck. Um, there's a print lap. If I can just draw a pip lap, that would be great. I'm happy to see Kyogre early on. Um, I think that'd be quite useful. So let's go for scratch. As there's nothing, nothing else to do. If I can draw a pip lap right now, I'll be very happy. Um, because I've got the entire evolution sitting here. I got two Empoleons in my hand, which is great. So recall to choose an attack from one of this Pokemon's previous evolutions and use it as this attack. So Prindlap had the Water Dive, which is only 20, or Direct Dive, which discards all energy from this Pokemon. But how do I get the energy back other than switching out for our Kyogre? It looks like this Kyogre is honestly just support, which is so strange to see. And I'm not drawing a Piplup, which is a serious issue. Um, both active Pokemon are now confused. Well, considering he's about to die, I'm not terribly concerned about that. Um, hmm. Kyogre's going to be coming in next turn. I, yeah, he's not going to be able to get Swirling Waves off immediately, but let's just see how it goes. Um, I want to keep taking Lisa for a switch, so let's go for the con Confusion Wave and see what happens. Um, hopefully I get lucky and my opponent's Pokemon hits himself in the head. So let's see how this goes. I'm worried they have another Queen. If they go another Queen this early on, I'm in trouble. It's the city. I hope there's not another Queen. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need a few games with this deck to really get a feel for it. Um, that's unfortunate. They broke through the confusion. Oh well, it happens. The nice thing is at least I can get the energy back with high water. So, that is what I want to see. Let's use Pokemon Communication. Um, it doesn't make sense to have two Empoleons in my hand. As much as I want to, as I want to throw that out one way, yes, I want Piplup very badly. So, let's put Piplup down. So we can get that going. And then let's get the energy onto Kyogre so I can use high water. These two going onto Kyogre. <sighs> yeah, I, you know, you also can't split the energy. Hmm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not feeling this. I'm worried this is going to be a very slow deck. Which I don't like for the current theme decks out there at the moment. Um, Maybe I shouldn't have actually done that. I probably should have gone and put this energy straight into Pipple Up. Huh. I actually don't know what the best play there would have been. I think I should have put those energy into Pipple Up instead. Ah, oh, and I'm not drawing more energy. Um, that's unfortunate. I was really hoping to draw energy there. This is tough. I actually, mm, I think I made a mistake powering up Kyogre. Uh, yeah, the way I'm thinking of actually playing Kyogre, if I play this again, is literally bringing in Kyogre, using high water to charge up another Pokemon, and then swapping Kyogre out. Even if it's a case of just hard retreating him. Um, and literally just using Kyogre for utility. I think attacking with him might be an error. Because I've wasted a lot of time now charging him up. Okay, I've got an energy, so let's see how this works. So let's... Mm, okay, because recall... So I presume recall shouldn't need a different energy cost. It should only require one energy. So let's Tate and Liz um, the switch into Empoleon and then let's charge him up and use Recall. Now as far as I understand I can then just use Bubble Hold. Okay cool. So it does work away. I was worried I need the more energy for that. So Recall is very powerful. 
Um, that's a switch. Switch is actually very good to see in this deck. Um, because I can then essentially retreat out my Pokemon, bring in Kyogre. Well, yeah. So I presume my... Oh, this is going to hurt. Yeah, this is my Polion gone. Ah, oh, man. That was silly. I actually didn't even see that they had a Charmeleon down. I wasn't paying attention. Hmm. Uh, so I think my error in this game was Charge Jump Kyogre. Because the thing is, it's easy enough now to knock out Charizard. That's easy. I can just bring a Kyogre and he'll, be go, and he'll go down. And if my opponent has a Rapidash, then I'm in trouble. Um, yeah, that was a big error on my side, not actually spotting out the Charizard coming in. Um, bit disappointing on my side. Okay, now... I don't think there's any basic Pokemon I'd want. I think I'd rather risk the Cynthia to go for the brand new hand. Let's go straight on, straight on my bench. I think I'd rather risk the brand new hand. Even with a switch in my hand, I'd rather risk it. I think I'm going to lose this one. Um, put an energy attached to this Pokemon into your hand. That's actually not that bad. I guess that's okay. Um, I think I'm going to lose this one. I'm not too concerned with that. Obviously it's disappointing. Um, obviously it's disappointing losing a game, but this is a good tester. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Kyogre's your main heavy hitter in this deck. Just because you can't see... I guess it's, you're only discarding one energy. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I need a few more games with this, um, this one before I can actually decide. Once during your turn before you attack, you put the top card of your opponent's deck on the bottom of the deck without looking at it. My opponent's deck doesn't have um, draw fixing, so that doesn't have... Oh, sorry. That doesn't actually matter. So let's put, put that on there. And let's go for the... Can anyone deal 30 damage next turn? Toolbuster can't deal 30 damage. Okay, so Kagi won't go down next turn. Let's go for the Swirling Waves once again. I'm very scared of Rapidash because of agility. Um, as bad as Golduck is, Golduck might actually be my, my closer. So one last thing with that energy loop, right? Is that if Golduck's about to go down and you go for the energy loop, you're essentially saving that one energy because it's being returned to your hand rather than going to a discard pile. Which is something I quite like. So in that sense, I guess two energy for 80 damage is actually not that bad. And energy loop allows you to essentially save your energy without it being discarded. Yes, you've got to constantly reattach your energies, which does slow down your, um, your field quite a bit. But you get to save energy, and it is only a one retreat cost. So you can essentially energy loop to recycle energy from Golduck to another one of your Pokemon, because you can then retreat in the next turn and attach that energy to whatever you needed. So, yeah, that's actually not bad. Um, I quite like that. Now, do I want to search for... I can use this to search for the evolution... Or do I want another gold duck? I might actually want another gold duck. This gold duck's great. Um, how many energies do I have here? I think I actually want another gold duck. I hope I have another gold duck in my deck. Yes, I do. Great. Uh, I'm thinking of actually using Kyogre this turn to restore energy. Um, I think that's a better play this turn. So let's use this to charge up that second Golduck. Big, I'm doing this now because I know that Farfetch can't take me out. And I've got a pretty funny feeling he's sitting with the Charizard in hand. The fact they went to go and fetch Charmeleon. Um, so I wouldn't put it past my opponent having that in their hand. And I want to use Kyogre's utility as much as I can. I've only got one energy there now. So, ah... Uh, Wow, my opponent's got unlucky. Two Town Balls in a row and 
essentially four heads. Well, now he has Charizard, that's for certain. Um, and the Nether Queen, which is an issue. That Nether Queen is actually a bigger issue than the Charizard. Because Charizard, I can O hit KO with a Golduck. Yeah, I can O hit KO with a Golduck, whereas I can't O hit KO with a Nether Queen. Hmm. So, upper prize card, so there is that. Um, and my Goldux can perform quite well. Now the question is, uh, okay, never mind. There goes Kyogre. That's so. You see, I'm actually okay with this play because my opponent's essentially giving me a free switch in. And I mean, Kyogre is not that scary at this stage. Um, and next turn, he's just going to go down to Golduck. I don't know. That that doesn't seem like the best play on my opponent's side. In my from my opponent's perspective. So I don't know what they've got in their hand. Um, yeah. So playing this game, I do think this Kyogre really is more of a support. Um, that you will swap in, use high water, and hopefully retreat him out the next turn, or switch him out the next turn. More than actually sitting on the field dealing a lot of damage. Um, I feel like these gold ducks are quite good mainstays, that they can just hang around. Um, ooh, I wish now I search for the Emporion. I might use Tate and Liz just for a draw mechanic. So let's get that there. I might actually want to risk that draw mechanic. So if I can get that Emporion out, that'll be crazy good. I'm using two switches though, but do I need a switch right now? I don't think I need a switch right now. I'd rather get a uh, fresh hand. That is big. That is a fantastic, fantastic play. What a fantastic play, I don't mean a two-point hole now, I'm just a fantastic draw. Um, okay, so, do I actually want to evolve him? Yeah, may as well, there's no reason not to. All right, let's go for the energy loop, let's get rid of this Charizard. So this is what I was saying, right? So now I'm essentially recycling this energy back into my hand, which I can now put onto what it will be the Empoleon and you can then use recall. So I yeah, that's actually a really cool ability. And I can essentially now retreat this Golduck for my second Golduck and do that again. To get the energy once again onto uh put it up. How much damage Aquafold is hump I can't actually take them out. It's a bit unfortunate. Um So if I recall my opponent can't put an energy another energy onto Nether Queen this turn. I think. Um, so I don't think Golduck will go down this turn. Pretty sure he won't go down this turn. And the nice thing is I can then use this direct dive from Empoleon's recall and just take out one of his bench Pokemon. If I can knock out this Nidoqueen. Queen. Uh, Yeah, I think I think I've got this. The problem is I need to knock out this Nether Queen. I quite like this deck. Um, I I don't think it's as strong maybe as uh, Laser Focus in terms of reliability and bumping up the versus ladder quickly. But that being said, I do think it's a fairly good deck. Um, I do think this is a fairly good deck. Oh, I was like, that does, well, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to get the energy back now anyway. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with this deck, I must say. So let's go for energy loop, get rid of Farfetch'd. And essentially now the game is closed because Empoleon can come in. He can use Recall and so I'm going to get my price card there. Well, that's my draw energy at least. And then recall. Oh, come on. I can then recall direct dive to take out one of his bench Pokemon, which would be the far fetched. Okay. The Empoleon seems to be what this deck revolves around. So, playing this deck, try to get the Empoleon out and keep it alive. Um, 
So it looks like Empoleon's your main heavy hitter, which is going to be doing most of the work for you. And I would say that your second, your secondary would be Golduck. Uh, this energy loop's got a lot of utility. And it's 110, he's pretty beefy. So I think Golduck will be your second, and then Kyogre would be your third. Um, I wouldn't rely on Kyogre. The fact that you require four energy, I don't think it's worth investing four energy in Kyogre um, for only 130 damage. It's a huge energy commitment, and I don't think it's worth it in the end. Um, it has, what does Forbidden Forest do again? What's doing each player's turn? They play with discard a card from their hand. If they do, the player switch their deck for basic energy card if it puts it in their hand. Then they play this card. Yeah. Forbidden Forest, yeah, it's quite nice. I don't, yeah. It benefits your opponent a lot, which I don't really like. Regardless, let's go for recall. And let's close this game up. So, recall, direct dive, and let's get rid of that Charmander. Okay, I was wondering if I'd still have to discard because of Recall, but I figured I would have had to. So we actually ended up picking up a win there, which I'm quite excited about. Um, I didn't think I'd pick up a win. Cool. Oh, I forgot I actually had that. Cool. That was a nice daddy challenge. Level up. Fantastic. Well, that was quite cool. Got a new booster, got a nice looking energy. Alright, um, and I got another event ticket, which is quite nice. So let's jump into a second game with this deck. I'm feeling a bit more confident now. Um, do 500 damage to a person Pokemon if you want. Yeah, let's do that challenge rather. I don't have. I don't feel like playing Grass Pokemon right now in Unseen Depths. Um, I don't think it's going to go so well. So this is quite a nice deck. Um, I quite like it. Uh, at the end of the episode, I'll open everything. So it's, it's interesting. Um, it's a certainly a very different type of deck. I enjoy it though. It's a bit of a challenge. It's not as straightforward a deck as um, Laser Focus was, or even the Soaring Skies. Ooh, I haven't played this deck in a long time. Um, oh, it's not a grass type Pokemon in this deck. Eh, this is unfortunate. Okay, um, this is going to be a bit of a tough game, I think. But let's see how it goes. Again with the Psyduck opening. Why? Why do you do this to me? I uh, want Psyduck as my opening Pokemon. Definitely don't want Psyduck as my opening Pokemon. Oh. Okay. Nice copycat for my opponent. Hmm. This is not a great opening hand. Um, I actually don't, I don't put much value in this um, Ambipom. So, uh, eh, do I want Pokemon Center it? I'd love to Pokemon Center a Golduck actually, that'd be quite nice. But again, Golduck's not going to do very well against this deck. Um, let's roller skate of this. And let's get ourselves, I definitely want the bigger draw. You should draw into another energy card anyway, so I think there's quite a lot of value in that. I've got the Fion, which is once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is your, on your bench, you may have your opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of their banished Pokemon. If you do, discard all cards attached to this Pokemon and put it on the bottom of your deck. So this is a card I want to sit in my hand. Um, well, actually, no, I need it on the bench in case he gets knocked out, uh, which he's probably going to get knocked out next turn. Um, I can do a Pokemon Center. Do I want... I don't really want a Piplup right now. I want to draw into a Piplup and then search for Empoleon. I really wouldn't mind this. Let's go for a draw and see what I get. Eh, that's not great. Let me hold off on this at the moment. Um, do you have a retreat cost? You do have a retreat cost. What I'm actually thinking of doing is let me. S uh, it's actually stupid. I should have played the energy later. I'm actually going to switch these two around. And my logic for that is I want to evolve Golduck next turn. Bring a Golduck out immediately. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. I 
I think I want to go for the Golduck next turn. Uh, I know Golduck is still weak to grass, and I'm burning a Pokemon communication which could have brought out an Empoleon. Um, oh, this deck is literally a straight counter to mine. Ah, oh, and I draw the Golduck. Okay, well, that's not the end of the world. Um, so I can still get a Purple Up on Empoleon out. Problem being, I don't have either. Um, yeah, let's just, let's go for now. I'm hoping to draw into a Purple Up. Because mm. he's weak to grass, which means that this Snova coming in is going to be more of a problem than anything else. Let's switch my opponent. That's actually a good thing. That's a very good thing. Because I'm going to be burning off two energies there. <laughs> Lily, why? I don't want you now. Um... Let's get this retreat going. Into Golduck. Golduck can knock him out. Uh, let's just go for this, just to get Lily off. Mm. Yeah, I'll just get Lily off. It's, it's three more cards. <laughs> That's a bit of a pain. I didn't want another print up. Okay, let's go for it. So, energy loop. Let's bounce the draw energy. Which is quite nice because every time I play that draw a card. So it's actually quite a nice card to bounce back to your hand. The problem is I'm most likely going to lose. Oh, there's my Napoleon, which is huge. That is actually huge. So now I can use Pokemon communication to bring out a um, Piplup and let's get this Napoleon online. And that's what I want to see. Because right now, this Lantern is scaring me. Um, and Lantern will KO this Golduck like there's no tomorrow. And he's going to have him online next turn. But... Oh, it's only a switch. It doesn't actually... Oh, there's Poplar. Wow, my draws have been fantastic today. Um, yeah, let me use it again on him. Because I'm going to get it back from the energy loop. Anyway. So, uh, I don't want to do with this. I don't think there's anything else to do other than just an energy loop. Okay, we've had a pretty good game so far. Um, I'm a bit behind in the energy game because I keep returning the energy to my hand, which was my concern from the start. There's Kyogre. Now, Kyogre, I actually would really have liked to have a second ago to bring in next turn. I might just let this Fion drop. Because I really want Kyogre out there so that I can use high water. Yeah, Golduck's toast. Um, do I want to have Prunlap down there? No, I don't really want to Prunlap down there. Let me go. The draw. I'm okay with the draw. I think that's fine. So let's get these evolutions going. Let's get Kyogre down. And let's get the next Psyduck down. Just in case I can get another... Um, in case I can get another Golduck out. Which I can actually do because I have Pokemon Communication. Um, I can use the Print Lab to get it out. So let's put the... Draw energy onto Ambi Palm. I know I'm losing it, but anyway. And I draw another Ambi Palm. Great. Well, I can use Pokemon Center to get rid of it at least. And yeah, just go straight for the draw. I don't think there's anything else I can do. The nice thing is, next turn I can actually use this Bye Bye Throw to chuck some of these energies in my discard pile um, to knock out this Lantern. Okay, I'm 
So I think I'm starting to get the feel for this deck. There is a lot of thinking involved with this deck. But that being said, there's a lot of utility. So you can do a lot with it, but you got to think about it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of thinking going on with this deck, which is nice. I like I like this challenge. Uh, let's get the um, communication going. I don't need Abby Palm. Uh, what I do need is a second Golduck, which is a prize card. That is unfortunate. Um, so let me draw an Empoleon then. Okay, well that's a tad unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Um, on the plus side, I don't know one of my cards is a Golduck now. So that's something to work towards. And again, with these Ambi Palms, I don't want you. Okay. Um, okay, I can use Pokemon Communication to get a Piplup out, which I actually think is what I'm going to do. So let's get rid of my Ambi Palm, because I don't want to see you. In my life, and let's get a Piplup out. The sooner we get Piplup out, the sooner we can get the evolutions going. I'm going to have a second Napoleon down, which is going to be awesome. Okay, so that's everything I can do there. Let's now bye bye this lantern. Bye bye, bye bye. Two. Yeah, two. Oh, why is it taking me the option? Okay. So Ambipalm actually came in use usefully, which is quite surprising. I'm actually surprised this deck doesn't run um, Fisherman, considering the amount of energy you have in your discard pile, and my opponent yields. So I'm quite happy we were able to take that game, I was very concerned that they had all my weaknesses. So this is quite an interesting deck, um, yeah, I'm going that way. I've had that challenge for quite a while I think. So Unseen Depths. It's quite an interesting deck. Um, there's a lot to it, but I think it has a lot more potential than I gave it credit for. Just short of the goal to get the next deck. So I think it has a lot more potential than I gave it credit for. Um, you can do a lot with it for sure. So I'm quite keen to have a few more games with it. I might just have a few games off stream just to get enough Poke points to buy the other deck as well. Then I can showcase that. So let's see, I've actually got quite a few booster packs open which I want to do as a big opening a bit down the line after a few more event games. So let's see what's inside our uncommon chest. And five Poke Points, but we got Jasmine, which is quite nice. Search deck for a steel Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand. If you go a second and it's your first turn, search for five steel Pokemon instead of one, then shuffle your deck, which is an awesome card if you're going second. If you can get this in your opening hand going second, it is awesome. So. That is our first game with the Unseen, unseen Depths. I do, I'm quite excited to jump into uh, the other one with the kite, with the Groudon. The name of it escaped me at this second. Uh, come on. The other Sun Moon deck that just came out now. It is the Towering Heights deck. So I'm most likely the next video is going to be actually checking out the Towering Heights and giving an overview of it. And we can go from there. So that being said, Unseen Depths is a very good deck that you have to think about when playing, which I enjoy that challenge and I hope many of you will enjoy it as well. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into the Unseen Depths deck. And if you're on the fence, hopefully this helped you decide for, well, I hope this helped you decide and make a bit more of an informed decision. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you did enjoy it. And again, if this did help you out, please do consider liking, subscribing, and comment down below. Let me know what you want to see, if this video helped me, uh, sorry, if this video helped you, and just let me help you. So, thanks for watching everyone. Cheers. Enjoy.